Hi, I'm Lois Fogelshaw. Um, the timer that Gary has on his watch just hit 124, just as we started this video. So he's talking to us. We are in that time frame of the 124 death to life. Um, this is episode two of What Does God Think? This is about the natural realm. What does God think about the natural realm meeting the spiritual realm? In other words, we have a natural realm. We have a spiritual realm. What does God think about all of it? And I'm going to show you what he thinks about it. Because we can absolutely, positively know what God thinks. And anybody who doesn't believe that, you don't know the Bible. Because the Bible tells us what he thinks about life, situations, how to deal with this, how to deal with that. It is our go-to book to know what to do and how to live our lives as his people, his Christians, as Christians. So, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for showing us, Holy Spirit, who we are and give us some knowledge. Lead us to all truth. And we bind all the evil going on in the world in Jesus Yeshua's name. Um, I'm going to start out with a scripture. This is a scripture you're probably not going to want to hear. <laughs> because when we deal with the natural realm and the spiritual realm, they're kind of operating together. But one is ordained of God and one is kind of against God. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. I actually have that scripture. I'm going to read that to you too. To be spiritually minded is life. So there is a process in being one of God's people and how we're supposed to live our lives. And in order to do that, we have to know what the Bible says about it. So Matthew 10, you can go to it or you can read it later. Verse 34, it says a very profound statement that some probably don't even know because it's just bizarre in what it says. And this is the Lord speaking. 1034, this is what he tells us. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be that of his own household. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that takes his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. In other words, if he, do, he does not take his cross, it says, and follow him, is not worthy of him. He that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. And then it goes on. He that receives you receives me. He that receives me receives him that sent me. And then it goes on to say, he, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. That's a pretty heavy statement there too. He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall re receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So, that's some pretty heavy words. And what is he telling us there? There is nothing that should be more important to you and me in this world than Jesus and following Jesus. And letting go of our lives and putting them into his hands for whatever his will is for us. If you notice on this earth, and this is something that we really find it hard to accept. And, you know, years ago, there was the whole prosperity gospel out there. And it did, it did a disservice to us in many ways. And I'll tell you why. Because what it preached was this. 
If you are sick, if you are dealing with poverty, you have lack of faith. That's what it taught us. So anybody that was battling with an illness as a Christian was thinking, what am I doing wrong? I mustn't have any faith. Those struggling financially, it made you think, well, I'm, I'm missing it because I'm supposed to be wealthy. We're supposed to be all rich according to what they say. Meanwhile, they're the rich ones and the people giving are the poor ones. And they feel guilty because they never attain the, uh, uh, the, the, the position of being wealthy. It did us a disservice because we're in a world with misfit toys. We're in a world where there's a lot of sorrow, a lot of suffering. People are um, lost limbs when they were in the war. People are disabled. People deal with real sickness. Babies, babies, innocent babies are born with cancer. They get cancer at like nine months, ten months old. There's hospitals that treat them and you watch the news and, you know, they want you to give money to it. And you look at that and you think to yourself, why? What did that baby do? The baby did nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The point is what he's saying to us in these scriptures. We can't be so focused on this life or we lose it. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus, period. It's the kingdom of God and nothing else matters. Absolutely is the truth. But we're in a world that constantly throws in our face things of the world. So we have desires. We have things we want to do with our lives. And we focus on nothing but that. And then what do we do? We stray away from the spiritual realm that we're supposed to be walking in, right into the natural world. Ah, the natural meets the spiritual, and bam, a clash. To be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is to think of the way of the world. And to live in the world and operate in the world and never, ever obtain that spiritual level that we're meant to as God's people. This is what it's talking about in the Bible. When he says, I didn't come into the world to bring peace, folks. Because if you follow me, your family members might just think you're crazy or hate you because of it. Why do they hate? Why did they hate Jesus? Why? Why did they hate Jesus? What did Jesus do on this earth? Think about this for a minute. Because this all perceives into today. What did Jesus do on the earth that he was so hated? He did nothing but love and heal people, didn't he? He fed the needy. He led people into loving one another. He judged no man. The woman that was supposed to be stoned, caught in the act of adultery. What did he say? He who was without sin cast the first stone. He didn't throw judgment. He could have. Because he was without sin. He came to bring us the knowledge. And this is where we got to get it. He came to bring us the knowledge of our God, our Father, our Daddy. The one whose image we were created in and likeness in. That the devil wants to bring us into his likeness and his image. When in fact he knows whose likeness and image we are in. But when he pulls us into that carnal, natural realm, it's enmity against God, the Bible says, which means it's against God. You can't think carnally minded and walk in the kingdom. You absolutely can't because it's sometimes the opposite. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? How could I possibly lay hands on the sick and see them recover? I can't. But the Holy Spirit in me can. Move me to lay hands on the sick. And then his power and his fire comes out. And they get healed. 
in the name of Jesus. Because without Jesus, there is no Holy Spirit that can come into us. Because unless we are washed free of our sin, a Holy Spirit can't dwell with us. So we have to be washed clean and white as snow. That's why we are not supposed to walk in condemnation. We are not supposed to live our lives thinking we are nothing but these wretched sinners forevermore. We know we're sinners. We also know we're saved by the grace of God and what Jesus did on that cross. We have to grab that. Hold that and never let that go. Even when you make a mistake and fall on your face. You repent and you move into the kingdom of God again, once again. If you fell into the flesh. Now I'm going to read you something in Romans. I think this is my husband's favorite scriptures. This is very, very, very powerful stuff. And if you grab hold of it, it will change your life forever. That's why the Spirit of God moved me to do these episodes, because these episodes show us truth from the Bible and show us who we are as God's people on this earth. And we need to learn these things. Otherwise, who are we? Who are we? Who are we if we're not operating in God's kingdom? If we're just in this world, all right, but technically not of the world, Jesus said that. I have it right here. John 17, 16. Jesus himself says this. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. It's the prayer we prayed to the Father before he went to the cross. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. They hated me, and they will hate them. People that are anointed of God and called to do God's work and are called to be in positions of authority are hated by demonic entities because they know that they have a purpose and a mission to accomplish, and they will motivate all kinds of people to have hatred just like they do with Trump. As much as the man has his issues, he's anointed of God. He was anointed to become our president because he helped America become a spiritual safe haven. It was becoming a safe haven. In other words, meaning that America was being turned into a country where we relied on ourselves. We had our own food sources. We had our own oil sources. We had our own businesses operating here. We didn't have to depend on other countries for our survival because in the end times, it's going to be a matter of survival. And countries that hate our guts just might not give us the things we need. When it comes down to it, you don't know. You can't, you can't trust the devil. You just can't. You have to be in the spiritual kingdom. And hear what the Spirit tells you to do and not do. Now, listen what it says in Romans 8. It's saying there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Listen to what that just said there. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, who are walking not after the flesh, but of the Spirit. We're in the world, not of the world. He who gains his life and tries to keep his life of the world will lose it. He who moves into the spiritual realm will live and live that life more abundantly. So he's making a statement there. You have to walk in the spirit, not the flesh. For the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus who has made us free from the law of sin and death. He set us free from that. But that doesn't give us the right to keep on living lives of sin and do whatever the world is telling us to do. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. In other words, he took it upon himself, went to that cross, and bore it all. He took it all. 
that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh again, but after the spirit. In other words, the righteousness of Christ will be manifest through us as we walk in the spirit in the kingdom of God. The natural and the spiritual, how does that go together? How does God look at that? What does God see in that? God sees the natural man and he sees the spiritual man. And what, which one is he for? It's for the spiritual man. So, the natural meeting the spiritual, the twain shall never meet. It doesn't work. It's like oil and water. You can mix it all day long. And the oil is going to glob in the water and kind of move around. That's what will happen. It just can't mix. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Hmm, good point. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You can't have life and peace if you're carnally minded. And most of us are still carnally minded. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It means it's totally against God. For it's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. It can't be. The flesh wants to do what the flesh wants to do. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Period. You are not pleasing God if you are in your flesh. It's that simple. But then he says this, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. What's the spirit of God? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of God. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts. Now, if any man... Have not the spirit of Christ. He's none of his. He doesn't belong to him. He's saying, you're not of the flesh. You have the spirit in you. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Through the spirit. You hear what it says there? It's This is giving us our whole life pattern, what we should be doing. So if we live after the spirit, we will live. The spirit, in other words, is going to motivate us, move us with the power and the fire to overcome the flesh. For you, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. There's that sons of God. That's what the whole conference thing is going to be about. The sons of God, you're the sons of God if you are led by the Spirit of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That means Daddy. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit bears witness to our human spirit. That we are the children of God. And if the children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the create creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. And then it goes on and it starts talking about other things. And it goes down to verse 28. For we know that all things work together for good for those that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Do you realize what that's telling us? It's telling us that we are walking out of the natural man, our flesh, and the things of the world that want to torment us and pull us into sin. We are being tugged by the Holy Spirit to walk with him, in him, through him, with the ability to be the sons of God. The former in the latter rain. We're in the latter rain. And the latter rain is what the sons of God are going to manifest and start operating with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You want the gifts of the Holy Spirit? You go read Corinthians 12, the gifts. One day I'll do another thing. If you want to go on our website, the whole teaching of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is on there. I want to make sure that I didn't miss any of this. What I want to tell you about all of it. The book of Acts. Okay. Chapter 2, 1. That's where they received the Holy Spirit. It says they were in one mind and one accord. In the upper room waiting. They were waiting. Just waiting for the moment in time. There is a timing for everything that happens. Everything. Time to be born, a time to die. And all of these things that we go through in our lives, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. That's not for the world. All things are not working together for good for the world. Absolutely not. Those that are operating under Satan right now and doing what they're doing, they're going to go to hell. That's why it's our job to get the message of Jesus out so souls can be saved and make them understand that there is a, there is a way that doesn't lead to death. The road to destruction is very wide, the Bible tells us. Why is that? Because we're in a carnal world. We're in a world where deception is very prevalent right now. Honesty has gone out the window, pretty much. You just about can't believe anything you hear anymore. Because you don't know what to believe. You don't even know what's truth. If you go on X, okay, Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. I'm on there. I put my stuff out there. If you go on and just read some of the stuff that's out there, one person will say one thing and another person will say completely the opposite. And they both believe what they're saying. Some just lie. But the problem is they're explicit in what they're saying on both sides. So how do you know what to believe? The only way to really find the truth out is to fact check and actually find out if what, they're be, what is being said is the truth. And the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us to all truth, the Bible says. So we have to depend on him to show us in this world what we need to do to survive. What does God think of the natural carnal mind? It's not how he exists. God does not exist in carnality. <laughs> he exists in spirituality. Because when he created the heavens and the earth, he spoke it. It didn't exist yet. He spoke it with the word and it was so. That's a spiritual thing. Because in the natural realm, we would have had to build it. He would have had to go out and take a hammer and start nailing whatever he had to do or whatever he had to do. Mold it out of the dirt, whatever. But most things are spiritually done. We as human beings in this earth, which is a natural world, we have to get our physical being involved in it to let that spiritual realm come forward. So I have to 
of my own free will, let myself do this, what God's called me to do, so the people on the other side watching this will hear what he has to say from his word for today. But I have to sit in this chair, get the camera going. This is where Gary does all the tech stuff because I don't have a clue how to do it. And everybody plays their part in putting the mission together that we're all meant to put out there, which is what? To share the good news. What is the good news? The good news is a spiritual thing. It's not a carnal thing. It's a spiritual thing that Jesus did on that cross to save us from our sinful nature, our flesh. But what we have to do with our flesh is to receive it. We have to receive it and believe it. And then walk in it. And talk in it. And share it to everyone we can. That's what our lives are meant to be. So when Jesus said he didn't come to bring peace on the earth, he meant that knowing him and following him was going to be a very disruptive thing because the demonic entities out of here, because we let them in, in the Garden of Eden, we let the devil in and all his beings, and they started to operate on the earth. That's why in Genesis, when they started reproducing with the women who they thought were beautiful and fair and lovely, and started having angelic human beings, giants, men of renown. God said man has gone totally astray and we have, to, we have to destroy him. And he repented from what he did. He felt very sorrowful for what had happened and what man allowed to happen. It grieved his heart. So he had to flood the earth to destroy all that demonic stuff going on and restart with Noah and his family. So the father looks down at all of this and because of our free will, which he gave us, because he wanted us to be able to choose him, he allowed us to be created knowing we were going to fall I had this discussion with Gary just the other day. This is all spiritual stuff. He created us knowing we were going to fall and have to deal with life in the way it is. Why did he even let us be created when he knew all this was going to happen? And the answer came because now he has way more people in his kingdom than he had back then when Adam and Eve were created. Because as time went on and we birth children and that child comes to Jesus, then they have a child and their family comes to Jesus. He's pulling all these beautiful souls, spirit beings into his kingdom. He lost a third of the angels to Satan but he's pulled in way more human beings than he lost when Satan did what he did. So he had a plan even, even in knowing we were going to fall because he also knew in that fall that many were going to come to Christ. Many were going to walk and follow him and be like our father in his likeness and in his image on this earth. And that's what we do. We represent him with the new birth. When we become born again, that's why it says born again. It's a new birth that we begin. We walk in that new birth, in that spiritual realm, not the natural realm. We're in the world, but not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And we don't operate as the world. We operate as the kingdom motivates us to operate with love, compassion, mercy, endurance, patience, all these things. And the Holy Spirit, we get baptized in the Holy Spirit with the nine gifts in operation, healing, miracles, 
discerning of evil <laughs> and the fruits, the joy, the peace, the love, the long suffering, the gentleness, the humility, faith. They're all part of it. So, this day, while you're watching this video, what does God think of the natural meeting the spiritual? They bang. They're enmity against God. The natural is enmity against God and the spiritual kingdom. It clashes. It clashes. So since we're flesh bodies, we have to let go. Let go of ourselves. What we desire, what we want, and give it to him. And let him move us and motivate us and bless us. When you do that, I've done that. Gary's done that. I don't live in sin. I don't live in the world. I live in the kingdom. And I have to tell you this from being in the kingdom. Doesn't mean I've never made mistakes. But God has always been with me. He's always helped me in my situations when I needed him. He's never left me alone. He's always gotten me through. And he'll always get you through. Even if you suffered major damage to your body. Even if you're one of those that are dealing with a child who has cancer. And it's a struggle for you every day. It's a body. It's a body we're in. But what we really are are spiritual living souls that will one day leave these bodies and become whole. And that's what it's all about. Do you believe it? Do you believe that? If you believe that, then walk in it. Stop letting your flesh tell you what to do. Listen to the Holy Spirit and he'll see you through. So, I'm Lois Vogel Sharp. I'll be back with my next episode. And the next episode is, what does God think about gift giving? It's the season right now that we're in. So next Thursday, it'll be out. What does God actually think about gift giving? So we'll talk about that. So I'll be back when he sends me back again. Gary and I love you very much and have a blessed day.